we are our biggest enemies ourselves and that's really the difference between us and going to masters is just that we fix that and we're good hey guys this is Pedro back with another interview covering VCT America stage one for this occasion I'm here with me or I'm here accompanied by Tex of Leviathan who are coming off of a 2-1 loss to 100 Thieves in the upper bracket semifinals of the stage one playoff. So Tex, like I said before, really appreciate you taking the time despite the, the loss. And so um just, just gonna hit you with the with the obvious question, you know, how are you feeling? You know, how, how are you taking in this result? Um yeah, I mean it's definitely rough. Um you know, we just didn't play to our full potential today and you know it sucks. Yeah, nothing else to 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 more to elaborate on other than that. Um, yeah, it's it, it was a, a pretty rough series for you guys to to just kind of absorb. Um, but so I want to review a little bit on as to what happened. You know, um, starting off in buying, you know, thirteen three, not obviously not the result you guys would have wanted, but more so just looking at hundred thieves and how they kind of performed against you guys on that map. You know, I mean, what kind of made it the most difficult for you guys in that first map um they just had a lot of momentum from the start um they started off really hot and you know it's just hard to beat a team when they start off really hot and they keep going to keep putting on that pressure um and they, they were just more proactive than us they were just they were just one step ahead and they were hitting all the shots so it just made it hard and what was the team's like mindset you know as you guys were um Moving on from map one, map two, you know, what, what was the kind of vibe within the team and also for yourself, you know, in just trying to move on from that uh, a, a rough start? Yeah, I wouldn't say we were too upset. I mean, we knew, like, we knew we can easily win Sunset. Um, I won't say easily, but we knew we could win Sunset. We're confident in our Sunset. So we just kind of brushed it off and said, we just have to win two B01s now. You know, we just thought about it differently. You know, it's whatever. Like, losing map one sucks, but... It wasn't like in our heads or anything. Yeah, uh, uh, for sure. And yeah, now going into Sunset, you know, uh, pretty, yeah, I, I, you guys were able to to tie the series, but it was one in which it was very difficult to do so, you know, um, allowing um, 100 Thieves to make that comeback on attack inside second half in, in that map. But then you, know, you guys were then able to close it out once all more time kicked or started. I mean, just going through first off, um walk me through how how that map transpired because you, know, you guys started off well on attacking side but then 100 thieves kind of returned the favor from there so what how did that kind of happen uh for the team and yourself yeah basically they the way 100 thieves kind of works is they'll just do a strat until you stop them and we just couldn't stop them at b um we weren't really adjusting it's not even just the b players faults us as a players um, could have also adjusted, could have rotated over, could have made a plan, could have done anything, you know. We were just kind of going through the motions, you know. We were just kind of going through the motions, and, yeah, we just had to really, at the end and over time, just really lock in a plan that we think will counter what they're doing at B, and it did. So, um, yeah, we just had to adjust, and we just weren't. And then, then the question must be said, you know, like, as 100 Thieves were just spamming Rush B, Rush B, go B, go B again. Um, did you guys like even think of just starting to just maybe go over to B, or were you guys what what what, what was that going through? What was that going on in your heads? You know, during that time frame. Yeah, it's just hard. Like we were thinking about just putting four there, or you know, we were thinking about different solutions. But you know, I think in the back of our heads, we were still scared that they were gonna swap it and just go A. So you know, if we play fucking five, sorry. If we put like five, uh, you know, people there and to be, and they just go A, it'll feel terrible. So, you know, we were just kind of trying to cover all our bases when we really just had to cover B. And yeah, because yeah, it seemed that there was no stop in that, but you guys were then able to to stop that, you know, when it mattered in overtime. And, and yeah, like uh, then that said, what, how were you guys able to then break the tie? Just finally emerge out of sunset victorious victorious especially in in overtime yeah we just finally made the adjustment um Aspas had a really good call um on what how to fix this at b uh he made a call he's like guys i have round winning call and we're like all right bet 
and uh, we followed his plan, and they got mopped finally. So, um, yeah, that's a good adjustment from him, and it was a good T side round from us uh, also to get us uh, the round fourteen. And yeah, that was really it. Yeah, going over to to map three, you know, uh, Icebox the decider, and just um, it it was fairly even all the way throughout, you know, even up until the very end um before 100 thieves kind of moved away or, or kind of um breezed past you guys or breezed by you guys um what do you think kind of flipped the switch um in favor of them but also against you guys mm, yeah we ended the half six six i believe and then uh i think we got ecoed next half i'm pretty sure it was the second half we got ecoed um and you know i think that was just in the back of people's minds it was it was rough honestly getting ecoed on any team feels terrible um yeah i think once that happened it momentum was slowly shifting in their ways and there was a lot of close rounds and just didn't come out unfortunately we were just not shooting as hard as we usually do um was it just mostly mental or just sort of not anticipating like 100 thieves plays you know in, in that second half of the third map what do you think kind of um contributed the most towards the team's um loss in that third map i'd say it was a little bit of everything a little bit of mental especially after losing the eco um them just playing really good honestly they were hitting a lot of shots um and yeah once again they did the thing where they just keep going to the same site over and over and if you don't know how to stop it they just keep going and we're just losing our retakes so just a little bit of mental and losing our retakes, and that's all it takes. Yeah, unfortunately, it, unfortunately, you guys were handed this result and just dropping down to the lower bracket. But fortunately, in playoffs, you get another chance. And yep. in that second chance, you know, you, you get a rematch of the Latin American uh, uh, rivalry, El Clasico. Um, yep. You guys already faced them. A few weeks ago, or maybe not even a, oh, a few weeks ago, maybe one week ago. But mm-hmm. now, now rematching them again. Uh, what was your observations of, of the team? You know, um, when they were facing off against G two, and just sort of now, as you look ahead towards this next edition of the rivalry. Yeah, I wouldn't say we were watching them too closely when they're playing G two. We're pretty focused on our game. Uh, I'm sure, like tonight, we'll take a look at them, but. Yeah, I mean, they're a strong team. They shoot hard, and they're like, once again, they're a momentum team. Um, you know, if they're feeling it, you have to stop them. And I think tomorrow, um, I think we'll wake up a little bit. Uh, today, I don't know, we felt a little unfocused, et cetera. And I think the the rivalry will really wake us up because we want to go to Shanghai, and we don't want to lose the crew. Um, so I think tomorrow will be different. Going a little bit over before that, um preparation you know given the fact that you finished first seed in your respective group you guys had a lot of time to kind of refocus re- recover and also assess the playing field before everyone else um what was the preparation like and what did you guys kind of focus on more that than the rest during that time frame yeah it was a little weird because we had to prep for different teams um, you know, we had to prep a little bit for 100 Thieves, we had to prep a little bit for Loud. So that was really the difference. Usually we're just prepping for one team because we know who we're going to play. Uh, but this time, you know, it's just a little bit of less prep because we had to prep multiple teams. Um, and then once we found out we're playing 100 Thieves, obviously we put all our prep into them. Um, and yeah, we just... It was just, I don't know, today was just a little, a little weird. Like our team didn't feel um, just... I don't know. We just didn't play to our identity, really. Just aggressive, etc. Um, so I think that's going to be really heavy in our preparation now, next time. I kind of want to ask again about buying, but more so just um, the bat pick. And I, of course, I understand that you guys uh, basically perma ban split. And, you know, uh, what was that thought process like, you know, allowing buying through and just having to deal with 100 Thieves, you know, because the fact of that, they, that they were or they are pretty good in that map going into it, you know, what was that? What was that uh, uh, thought process like in just going through uh, the map pool during the draft phase ahead of that uh, of the of the series? Yeah, I definitely say Bind is a really good map for us too. Um, it's just unfortunate that we didn't play to our standard today. Um, like we thirteen four to energy on Bind, like 
and you know really good in practice. So, um, yeah, I mean it was just a really comfortable map, and it just didn't go our way. I wouldn't say it was a mistake letting bind through. I just think um, it was just a mistake of us not playing it right. Okay, I understand that. And uh, now going back into the future, you know, um, as I said, journey doesn't end. Got another chance. Double Elim, double chances. You, you know the business on that. But what do you think kind of separates this team from finally uh, returning to the international stage? What do you think separates your team to the desire to go first and foremost, you know, reaching masses? Mm. Just ourselves. We just got to play like ourselves and we'll win. I think that was really our, our, the biggest struggle that we ever have as a team. It's like kind of like us against us, not really us against the other team, because we know we have the best players on like almost every role on this team, um, probably every role to be honest. And it's really just up to us. It's really not up to the other team. I think we can be anyone. Anyone at the end of the day, anyone can be anyone. Um, but I would say we are our bigger. We are our biggest enemies ourselves, and that's really the difference between us and going to Masters. It's just that we fix that and we're good. Is, is there pressure that kind of ties into that? Because um, I, of course, interviewed you before kickoff and I asked you about like community expectations, you know, as you, you guys had a pretty stacked uh, roster, including yourself. Um, is there any pressure that kind of tie, ties into that kind of internal conflict? Um. Yeah, maybe a bit, honestly. I think. I mean, we're all fully confident, but you know, just I think we just got a little maybe I won't say nervous, but the pressure got to us because I guess it's like the Shanghai game, you know. Um, and I think that's really just a little bit of pressure from that, and that's all it really took. I mean, a little bit of pressure, and we just got to play through it. We have before, and we can do it again. Of course, of course, and hopefully you guys are able to do to do that uh, tomorrow. I believe you guys do that match tomorrow. And yeah, hopefully you guys make that happen. I'm going to wrap it up right here. Tex, really appreciate you taking the time talking to me for, for a quick convo, despite the result. Really appreciate it. And yeah, nothing else to say further than good luck and best of luck. Thank you. Appreciate it.